Tomorrow marks 13 years since the beginning of the Syrian civil war. What began as a civil uprising against President Bashar al-Assad is a conflict that's now killed an estimated half a million people. One group fighting the Assad regime is the Islamic State, or ISIS, who've also targeted journalists. Jim Foley was an American journalist covering the war when he was kidnapped by ISIS terrorists in 2012 and publicly beheaded two years later. His murder shocked the world. A decade later, his mother, Diane Foley, tells Jim's story and how she came to be a leading advocate for Americans held hostage abroad. That's all in her new book, American Mother. And Diane Foley joins me now. Welcome back to the News Hour. Thank you. So you have joined us here on the News Hour many times to talk about Jim, to talk about the extraordinary work that you do. What was it that told you you had to pull all of this together in a book right now? I, I really think the way we remember where we've been and our challenges going forward is by telling stories. Jim was a t storyteller. Um, all that you do, you help us remember what what. Um, is happening in the world. And Jim, it, it was time. I was feeling that it's been 10 years. Um, some, ch some people were children when this happened to Jim. And we have accomplished a lot as a uh, U.S. government. I'm so grateful for all the good people who've stepped up and made it happen, donated, been so generous. But the challenges are great. And I just felt it was time to tell the story and learn from it, if you would, and to inspire others, take up the torch. I notice even as we're sitting here, your eyes occasionally flick over to the photo mm. and Jim's face. Mm. What's it like for you to see that photo? Oh, Jim was such a, he was the oldest of our five children, um, a beloved son, but he's challenged me. He's challenged me because I failed him, Amna. I did, our government failed him. Um, we failed um, these young Americans, not just Jim, even Sotloff, Peter Kasich, and Kayla, as well as um, Luke Summers and Warren Weinstein were killed in that same time frame. So we failed, and we are learning. We, President Obama set up the hostage fusion cell that still exists. We have a, a brilliant current hostage um, special envoy at the State Department. Mm -hmm. More than 100 people have come home since 2014. A lot of good things to celebrate. But the challenge remains. More and more countries are targeting our citizens. And we're, we're very challenged as the Foley Foundation, as our, is our government, to handle it all. You open this book, Diane, with an absolutely astonishing moment which is when you sit down in the same room across the table from one of the men who kidnapped your son and brutally tortured your son and had pled guilty to the role he played in your son's death. And one of the first things you say to him as you sit down is, good morning, you can call me Diane. Yeah. Wow. What made you want to go sit down and talk to him? A lot of things. Jim would have talked to him. Jim would have wanted to hear him out. Um, Jim had worked with a lot of disenfranchised young people like Alexander, who was so vulnerable to all the radicalization. But I also, as a mom, wanted to tell him who Jim was. And I really wanted to be able to see him as a human being who had made some hor horrific choices. Um, and it was good. It was good. Um, I was grateful that God gave me the strength to do it. You also write about yourself and your husband, John, at one point, and you say, it is incredible, though, what you don't know about your own child. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the same for every parent, but it stuck, struck John and me years later that we didn't really know Jim all that well, not in his entirety, until after he was gone. I know. What did you learn about your son? So much. Um, <laughs> Jim was our oldest, and because we had four others, I was quite busy. <laughs> And um, with the younger ones and working part time, and I love my work as a nurse practitioner. So, Jim, when he came home, um, wanted to interview us, wanted to know how we were, what's up, what's going on, and really didn't share a lot about what he was up to. He really um, didn't share a lot, I realized. And it was really only after his death that I realized how many people he'd touched, how many lives he'd uh, mentored. I had no clue about any of it, because Jim never talked about it. 
you know. You mentioned the foundation that now carries his name, the James Foley Foundation. You've already changed how this U.S. government handles hostage affairs. You advocate for the dozens of Americans who are still held hostage abroad right now. But I should note, I see how hard you work. Others who know this work see that. Your own family has asked you to slow down. <laughs> what is it that keeps you so devoted and so dedicated and moving forward every single day? Well, I'm challenged by the needs that continue. Um, we've definitely improved as a government, but we have a long ways to go. I mean, we have nation states that are targeting our citizens now um, and wrongfully arresting them. We've got to figure out how to deter this practice. We, we must, because a lot of people are still suffering. And, and it's still hard um, to get the attention for some of these families. Even with the wrongful detention process, it's rather opaque. We're struggling working with our government to try to figure out ways to help people um, understand where they are in the process and what is possible for the government, what is not, what we need third party experts to help with. Our government can't do everything. So that's partly our role, trying to help um, families figure out how to get the attention they need to bring their loved one home. What do you think Jim would think of the work you're doing today? I think he'd be doing some of it, <laughs> I, to be honest, although I, I don't think he would have left his beloved journalism. He believed in the power of journalism, and he really believed that we had to be in conflict zones. We had to bear witness. Um, he really believed in that. So uh, I think he'd be doing what he was doing, and I think he would want someone to be advocating for those who are targeted and held hostage. The book is American Mother, co-written by Colin McCann and Diane Foley. Diane, always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma.